Well, pardon the mess on the bench. I only just uh, finished getting this thing cobbled together. This is my master oscillator that I've been working on. It's to take the place of my rubidium as a bench source. The, I use the rubidium to calibrate this unit, but since the rubidium has a limited lifespan, I wanted something that I wasn't going to worry about so much running all the time. And that's what this is to be. And right now, out of it, I am getting 10 million um, point zero hertz. And I couldn't hardly ask for more than that, at least not off of this uh, this bench. So I'm good within a, a tenth of a hertz. She'll come back, I think. Yep, there we are. And we've got a relatively clean output. Nothing to fuss about that. A little bit of peak-to-peak uh, -peak variance, but all in all, it looks pretty good. I'm using a... Um, a times two uh, multiplier in here. I'm going to go ahead and open up this case carefully. All right, here we have a look at the innards of the thing. Uh, start with the power line. I've got the power line coming into a line filter to try and help keep um, RF from coming in and RF from going out. I'm fused. Um, I've got a, uh, a multi-voltage uh, power supply on the board here. Gives me uh, 12 volts at uh, about 2.5 amps. And uh, gives me 5 volts uh, as well. About the only thing I'm using the 5 volts for currently is to power my LED. But um, I do have the LED circuit, the on-off switch. Here's the output of the board. This is my master oscillator. It's a um, an MTI unit. It's a five megahertz oscillator. It's got a very uh, actually it's a double oven. Uh, it's very consistent, stable. I was able to uh, uh, tap into a voltage line, and with a potentiometer, I could change the voltage going on. Uh, the VCO terminal and, and gave myself a fine tuning adjustment which was just enough to to crack the 10 million point zero adjustment border and this little steel cased unit right down here that's my times two multiplier so I'm taking the five megahertz multiplying it by two and giving myself ten I'm gonna bring that out So that's what she looks like inside. I, I used an old um, uh, HP frequency counter box from a, a counter that just wasn't going to uh, be good for anything except for parts. Makes a wonderful project box. Very nice cast metal uh, uh, shielded um, enclosure and, and a nice snap on top. And when I get done painting it, she's going to be beautiful. So the, uh, the only other thing I'm working on right now is uh, this is a 9-pole Butterworth uh, 10 megahertz filter that I've made up. Uh, it helps uh, clean up the, some of the, any of the distortion that's in the, uh, the frequency, and it helps make sure that you zero it in. But in order for me to use that because of the additional losses that I pick up with it, then I'm going to need to build a uh, 10 megahertz amplifier and put that on the board as well. And then I gotta find some real estate in here to put all that stuff, but yeah, maybe back in this area here I can manage it. We'll see. I'd like to do that. I'd like to be able to clean that signal up and then boost it up again. But that's it. Okay, so I've got my rubidium oscillator. It's in lock right now, and I've got it feeding the line here. 
And that line runs to my counter. And from my counter, I run up to my oscilloscope. And the waveform I get out of that divider circuit that I've got on the rubidium, it's not the cleanest I've ever seen, but it's accurate. It's providing a 10 megahertz signal. I definitely am going to want to do something to clean this up uh, eventually, but as of right now, this is the frequency that I'm getting out of that unit. And what I'm utilizing to run my counter is my 5 megahertz master oscillator. I did not adjust that master oscillator for the past month. So it's still got the original calibration on it that I had a month ago. And as you can see, I'm, all, I'm within a count, and I'm actually better than uh, a tenth of a hertz at 10 megahertz right now. Occasionally I do get a bad count, but that's, uh, that's the counter's fault. But in any case, the oscillator is putting out a very, very stable signal, and it compares extremely well to the rubidium light right now. It's held. And I'm using that signal to power this counter. I'm using my 5 megahertz uh, oscillator with the doubler circuit to power the counter, to power the PTS. It's a lot of fun, but I can, I can hook this PTS up and uh, instantly... Well, I'll go ahead and show you. Watch this. I'll, uh, I'll disconnect myself from the rubidium. And I'll reconnect myself to the PTS. And right now the PTS has 8 megahertz dialed in. We're going to flip it on. We're going to take a look on our counter. I've got the counter set for a 10 second count right now. I could uh, actually dial down. But uh, that's the first count. On this next count we'll even see if it gets better. There you go. 8 million to a tenth of a hertz. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change the... Uh, let's go ahead and make it a one second count just because we don't want to wait forever. Let's go ahead and change it to 7 million. 5 million. 4. 3. 2. One, about a hundred. Oops, I forgot to turn the one off. There we go. There's a hundred megahertz. So you get the idea. The PTS is utilizing the same clock as is my counter. It's accurate. We know it's accurate because we tested with the rubidium, but because it's using the same clock, I'm going to read exactly what whatever I I intend to put out on this uh, uh, generator is what I'm going to read on my counter. It's fantastic, and that's because of the digital, the fact that this is a digital synthesizer, uses a digital process to make the uh, the signals and divide it down, and this is a digital counter, so I'm going to be good to the digit, and I am, and that's what I want. Yeah, let's uh, take a look here. There's my 100 megahertz. Give myself a little bit of... And we can expand that. There you go. We'll take her back to 10. There's 10 megahertz. So I am quite happy with the way that the master oscillator is working. And uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at these uh, distribution amplifiers. And I've already uh, I've already modified the five megahertz uh, boards and made them into ten. I'm going to see if I can take the one megahertz boards and do the same thing. 
so uh, I'll get back to you later. Well, we have the 10 megahertz master oscillator operating. It's been running for a while now. Right, so at the moment, I am not running um, this Philips uh, counter off of the external input. The 6673 uh, is running off of its internal oscillator, which also was calibrated to the rubidium. And uh, right now we are using its internal oscillator to give us the uh, uh, the frequency of the uh, master oscillator, and we see that we're 10 million to within a tenth of hertz. So right on the money. That's how accurate it is. Now it's held that for quite a while. We were basically within two tenths uh, over the last three weeks. And uh, there's a view of the signal itself. So she looks good, stable, and uh, right on the money.